Shabbat Shalom, everybody. This is uh, Rabbi Stephen, Rav Shmuel, Rashbi with you, if you will. Uh, and welcome to this week's 10 Minute Torah. This week, we're going to be doing, talking about the Parsha Nasa, take a sentence, take a census. And uh, as you all recall, last week we had a little break in our flow of Torah portions. Uh, we had Parsha, as I like to call it, Parsha Shavuot. We had a two day Shavuot, and uh, thank you everybody who showed up for our services. So as you know, um, we're starting to get a little bit more active in doing services. We are doing all the holiday services. If you remember Passover, we did four services. We did Passover one and two. Uh, we did, of course, Shabbat. It was Chalkamoed. It was right in the middle of the um, of uh, Passover, of the festival. And then we did seven and eight, which are important. Shavuot, we did Shavuot one, the first uh, service on Friday. And of course, we did the second one, which was also, also coincided with Shabbat. And going forward, we're going to be doing more of that. Um, maybe even I'll be at the synagogue. You know, I have my office hours to do when I'm there anyway. Maybe we'll start doing services on Rosh Chodesh, you know, when there's a new month. That's a little bit of a special weekday service. And starting in the fall, I would like to start having in-person live classes. Now, I understand and realize that not everybody's going to be able to come. Um, so we will still be streaming on Zoom one way or another. Uh, also for the summer, when I start my, uh, when we continue with the Miller class and when we start our beginner's Hebrew for uh, the children that are not quite there yet, let them catch up a little bit for the fall. Um, that's also going to be live. I'm going to be in the synagogue on Sundays going forward because, uh, you know, I think it's easier it's certainly easier for me traffic wise. Uh, but also, you know, there are some people that may want to see me that work during the week. So, you know, it makes sense that, you know, Sunday I'm there. I remember growing up uh, Hebrew school, Sunday was a very active day. It's really, you know, for us Jews, it's really the first day of the week. So it kind of makes sense. Okay. So looking forward to that. I'm even starting in my mind to prepare for uh, uh, the high holidays. So there it is. All right. So, Parsha Nasa, okay, take a census. Now, my son and I were having a little discussion. His question was, where is it in the Torah? Where is the negative commandment not to count people? Because what happened with Bamibar? You know, that's the beginning of numbers. It was aptly called numbers. Why? Because, of course, we're taking a census. How do we take a census? Well, uh, all the men between the ages of 20 and 50, uh, pay a half shekel, and they count the half shekels. And you pay a half shekel whether you're rich or you're poor. You know, apparently, it's not that big of a deal to pay a half shekel when you figure how many men there are between the ages of 20 and 50 across the 12 tribes. Those, of course, eligible for military service <laughs> starts to add up. So the rabbis look at these types of things and they say, oh, okay, nothing in Torah is by chance. Nothing is just, you know, just there. Everything has a reason. And there's a reason why God said to Moses, collect a half shekel and count the half shekels. Now, how do we count uh, a minion? Well, good question. Here's the answer. Uh, theoretically, one way to do it is ask everybody to hold up their prayer books or their machine and you count the prayer books. So it's a derivation. Similarly, this uh, portion, Nasso, count the heads, take a census, starts off with the other two clans of um, Levi. You know, in the at the end of the last portion, uh, Bamid Bar, they were talking about the Kohathites that were carrying the most, you know, the crucial, the critical parts of the Mishkan, you know, the ark and the table and, you know, the, the, the menorah. Uh, now we go to the Gershonites and the, uh, the Merarites. The Gershonites were the ones that were carrying the curtains and the covers. And the uh, Meraris were car car carrying the um, poles and the sockets and things like that. So, and the Levites, the other two clans, the Levites, 
uh, were actually counted between the ages of 30 and 50. Now, we remember that they originally we counted from one month of age. But in this case, we're counting the heads of the Levites between the ages of 30 and 50. Now, the explanation is that these are the Levites that actually performed the services. These are the ones that did the officiating. These are the, the Levites, the ministers, you know, that worked with the Kohanim to do the offerings. When a Kohen was, and I think, I'm not sure if it's 20 or 25. Uh, I think it was 25 because they go through a five-year period of apprenticeship or internship, if you will, when they learn, you know, the various rituals and rites of, of actually performing the, uh, the services. Now, in our movement, in the conservative movement, you know, we pretty much adhere we uh, conform to the rabbinical assembly's sanction or mandate, either way, that we do the triennial cycle. So we're only reading the first third of the uh, portion, and that's basically what this is. It goes also, the other part of the first third of uh, the triennial cycle, of this particular triennial cycle one, is uh, discussing what happens when somebody takes something that doesn't belong to them. It is uh, the context that they use if somebody takes something that's, you know, that's, that's terum, something that's part of the priest's bounty or somebody that maybe take, well, actually, no, I'm sorry, let me go back on that. There's a different, there's a whole different punishment for that or remedy, if you will, uh, if you take something that's something that doesn't belong to you. So why is it that this particular portion follows the idea of what the Levites are going to be carrying and follows also some of the, and then it precedes the offerings at the end of uh, this partial. Well, the idea is that when you steal, you're going against God. You're, you're, it's a travesty to Hashem. Why? Because God basically, right, gives us all we need as uh, the morning breath blessings talk about. God has a plan for everybody. Now, from our point of view, we're kids, we're children, we go to school, we learn things, we grow up, we become, become adults, we choose a profession or a job, in my case, maybe three or four, you know, maybe some of you have done a little bit more, maybe some a little less. But, you know, based on your work and based on your profession and based on what you do in life, you know, you get material goods, right? Uh, you make money, you go off to the store, you buy things, you, you provide for your family, et cetera, et cetera. So God has this plan. God says, okay, this is your, let's call it Dharma. This is your purpose in life. This is your purpose in life. So, you know, again, like we say in, um, in I guess, you know, Rosh Hashanah, you know, this, what's going to happen in the year when we're inscribed in the book of life. Some of us will be rich. Some of us may not be so rich. Some of us may struggle a little bit. Others may just kind of fall into things. Um, and, and that's really kind of where it's at. Remember, what are the command? The tenth commandment is: Do not covet your neighbor's belongings, not your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, you know, your neighbor's animals, etc. Because you get what is right for you. Some people can say, well, you get what you deserve according to God. Okay, but God has a plan for all of us, and we all have our path to follow. Another one of the prayers, uh, morning prophet that we say, who sets us on life's path. And that's our path, is to do what we do and get rewarded for it, or get the consequences of our, of our working. So very important. So everybody has a purpose, and hence the idea of stealing. That's why it's one of the Ten Commandments. It's not just a matter of, you know, well, it's not your stuff. Don't take it. You know, you don't deserve it. You didn't work for it. You know, don't go ahead and just take it. It all has to do with God. God arranges, the God created, maintains, and sustains the universe. So you get what God gives you. Don't take something else. It's a travesty. that you're going against God's plan. And that's kind of how we see it from a religious point of view. Now, of course, some people choose the secular part. It is what it is. So there's a couple of other, and they say that this is the longest portion of the whole Torah, because 
we have the uh, discussion of the Sota, which is a woman that was seen in the company of a man who was not her husband. Now, nobody saw them do anything, but they were in the company. So now the husband's jealous. And, you know, there's the whole drinking the bitter waters that I guess we'll go into next year. When that's, what is that triennial cycle? Uh, there's also the Nazarite, somebody who decides that 613 commandments aren't enough, or they want to uh, ascend to a higher level of holiness. So they take on three extra commandments, which is don't get a haircut, don't be around uh, a, a corpse, somebody who died, and don't drink anything that has to do with grapes. You can't have wine, you cannot even have grape juice. So they've taken on some extra things, you know, because they want to ascend to a higher degree of holiness. Maybe they haven't been doing what they feel like they should be doing, and now they kind of want to make up for it. So, and then finally, we have uh, the various tribes bringing um, bounty. Okay, so that is this week's portion. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Hope you had a good Shabbat. We will see you in synagogue, and we're going to start going live now that COVID's starting to update. Okay, Shabbat Shalom, and thanks again for listening.